Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody today to our second webinar that we've had in reference to Leverage Care Solutions. Uh, I'm David Phillips. I am the CEO of Estate Planning Specialist, headquartered here in the Phoenix metro area, where today it's about 100 degrees, so it's not too bad. Uh, we're, we're having uh, some monsoon seasons, and so it's uh, actually pretty pleasant out there with quite high humidity. I wanted to uh, take some time just to kind of, as far as introduction, and let you all know that, uh, as I said, we are headquartered here in Arizona. We've been doing estate planning for about 45 years, so we have a tremendous amount of experience doing that. And, and doing my planning for the literally thousands of estates that I have planned throughout the country, um, we have realize that there is one piece of the puzzle that seems to be left out of the estate plan, and that is long-term care planning, long-term medical expense planning. And so this is what we want to do is focus today on the solution or the answers to today's long-term care crisis. Um, I'm going to lead you through this. Now, most of you have heard about our special report titled by the same name as this webinar. Um, I will tell you that after we get done at the end of the webinar, I'm going to talk to you about a special request that Mark Skousen, the editor of Forecast and Strategies, made to me while we were at Freedom Fest, Freedom Fest last week as a speaker. So um, I want to, but before we get into that, and I'll share that at the end of the webinar today, but let's just talk today about the... Uh, solutions that we that we have and and the issues at hand. So first of all, the main question is um, that I have that I would like to pose to the group without an answer here because everybody is muted. Um, have you had a long-term care experience? Do you know of someone, a relative, a friend uh, that has been experiencing a long-term care event? Well, most of us have. And in fact, right now, today, um, my generation, the baby boomer generation, are living this, not necessarily for us, but we are taking care and responsible to take care of our parents. We want to take care of our parents. And yet what we found is that they, for the most part, don't have the means to do that. And so therefore, we are required to take care of them. So we are living this right now. We're living this event. And frankly, for me and my family, I don't want to paint myself into the same corner that my parents and my in-laws have done, um, where you don't have a whole lot of options. I want, to, I want to give options to my kids and to myself if I ever get into that situation. So um, just think about that as we go on here, if you've had that experience, and, and, and therefore you understand the, the impact that it has, the stress on the family members. Uh, we know that right now 80% of those that need care are receiving it by unpaid family caregivers. So it's the wife, or the husband, and in the case of my in-laws, it was the husband taking care of the wife, and then he just recently passed, uh, and the family was taking care of him. Um, so it, it generally is, is the family that's doing that, and especially if the spouse is taking care of the um uh, if the spouse is taking care, you're you're in the situation where you're six times more likely to suffer from anxiety or depression if the spouse is. We also know that one in four Americans that are over 65 will live into their 90s. So there's a high probability that we will use this. Um, we also know that four in 10 Americans are or were caregivers. I think about that for a second. In my situation, right now, uh, my wife had been had, had been until my father-in-law passed away, been involved in 50% of the care of my father-in-law. Now, uh, that that's great, and it's awesome that we're able to provide that care for our for our family members, especially for our our parents. But it does take a toll on the family, and is that really the choice that we want to leave our kids? Um, one in three caregivers provide financial support 
in addition to the actual time that they spend and the time they take away from other things such as work, such as play, such as traveling and, and whatnot, uh, they end up being slaves into the situation. And uh, as a result, it takes a big, it's a big impact on everybody, but financially as well. Considering the fact that uh, there's a 3% chance of our home burning down and an 18% chance of us totaling our car sometime during our lifetime, uh, that's not, the probability is not that high on those things, and yet we're required to have some type of insurance to cover those two events. Whereas with a long-term care experience or an event, there's a 72% chance that those over 65 will have a long-term care event in their life. In fact, it's as high as 80% for women. So there's a very, very strong probability that we will end up needing care. There's a 91% chance that those of us that are married and over 65, that one of our spouse will need, will have an experience, a long-term care event, just like our parents are right now. I, I, this statistic just blows me away. Right now in the United States, one out of nine individuals over 65 have Alzheimer's. And that's a long event. It's not a short-term event, as we all know. With the average cost being around $100,000 for a nursing home in the United States today, that's the average, and assisted living at 40000 Now you can see that just based on today's dollars, you can actually eat away an estate pretty fast. And uh, I was talking with an individual at uh, the, my father-in-law's funeral uh, last weekend, and he told me that his mother was in, an, in a, lo a nursing home and she was on a ventilator. And the cost for the last year, she's been on a ventilator for a year, the cost is $20,000 a month. Well, think about that. And, and this is just the average cost here that I'm showing you on this slide. Um, we know that that's today, but what's going to happen tomorrow? Well, we know that inflation is going to take a toll and and especially with regard to uh, long-term care or medical care it's in and of itself the expenses are significantly greater they they the inflation is greater than the norm than the av average and so as a result you can see that uh, these the current cost will double by 2040 in in every category well, so let's talk about then the solution. Right now, if you were to trigger a long-term care event today, God forbid that that would happen to you today, which asset or which assets would you cash in to take care of yourself, to take care of, to help pay for your care? Now, this is a typical estate that we see, about a, a little under $2 million estate. And you can see here that uh, we have uh, stocks and bonds. We have mutual fund account. We have an IRA, about $450,000 IRA real estate holdings, including your home of $420,000, little cash value life insurance policy. And then you have some CDs sitting here uh, or money market accounts or some cash equivalent that you have. Well, obviously, if you're going to have a care event, usually the lowest yielding assets, the CDs, the money in accounts, those are the ones that you're going to use to take care of your uh, long-term care event. So let's see, let's just discuss for a second then what are your options when it comes to taking care of you, uh, to taking care of this long-term care event. Right now, today, and actually for the last 20 years, the number one option has been to secure a standalone long-term care policy. The next option is just to be rich enough to pay for everything, or I also like to call it self-funding. Another option would be to reposition some of those assets into what we are calling the leveraged care solution. You may have heard it called asset-based care planning or um, uh, linked planning, uh, but we actually have liked and, and are going to continue to call it Leverage Care Solution because it actually will, uh, as you go on, you'll understand why it really is a definitive term 
uh, phrase for what we're talking about today, leveraged care solution. So let's look, though, at the first option, which is the standalone long-term care policy. As we know, it's an expensive use-it-or-lose-it proposition. Now, I've had a lot of clients say to me, well, David, I already have this. I've had it for 10 years. Should I get rid of it and start the leveraged care solution? I would never, ever recommend that to anyone. But uh, usually those policies are pretty anemic based on today's um, expenses. And so you might want to double up and have both. Um, you certainly can and, and should make sure that your care is uh, extensive. Um, uh, the next thing that a standalone policy uh, has, a long-term care policy, is it's, is very, very difficult to qualify. Uh, and in fact, um, we have seen that about only 25% of those that try to get a standalone policy can qualify. Premiums have been receiving a significant increase through the years. In fact, recently in Pennsylvania, one carrier that we I heard about a uh, client told us that his premiums actually had increased 130% last year. Here's another interesting point about long-term, standalone long-term care policies. In the year 2000, there were 700,000 policies purchased. 700,000 in 2000. In 2015, just 15 years later, when the need is actually greater and baby boomers are now in this category, and they have the the, the wealth to protect. Uh, only 100,000 policies were purchased in 2015. Why do you think such a drastic reduction? Because it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense financially. And uh, and so let's leave that alone, and let's just go now to self funding. Because I had a lot have a lot of people puff up and pound their chest and say, "Hey, I am so rich, I don't need to do the leveraged care solution." And to that, I'm going to say. Well, after you see what we're going to be talking about today, you probably will want to be a better steward of your money because there is a way in which you can leverage money today and use that to take care of your care and leave more for your family. Again, remember, my number one uh, responsibility and job is to be an estate planner. It's to determine who gets what, when they get it, and how much they get. And if you're taking if you're taking it away from them because you're paying for care, or you're paying for this or that, that really isn't being a smart steward of your money. But let's just look at self-funding for a second. First of all, everything that is paid out and self-funded comes out of your own pocket. There's no one else fit footing the bill, so it's going to come out of your assets. It also, as you all know, as I explained earlier, but the long-term care expenses can add up very, very fast. You also should make sure that the money that you're putting into a long-term care self-fund should, it should be in a safe money event, um, a CD, a money market. You cannot put that money at risk. It's as if you went to the kids and said, okay, I'm gonna, I have this coffee can in the backyard. I'm going to stuff it full of $100,000 bills, $100,000 in cash. It's going to be in the backyard. And if I can't remember your name tomorrow, you can take that $100,000 and that's what I want you to use for my care. You, you can't put it at risk because if you have an 08 uh, uh, crash and you have it in, in a high-risk investment, you're going to have less for your care. And that's really not what you want to do. You want to make sure that it's there. And for, I think probably the, the most important thing to real, realize about self-funding is that a dollar is only worth a dollar. So there's no leverage. You're not using any, anybody else's funds to help take care of you. This is your money. It's coming out of, your, out of your pocket. So, again, we know that there's an issue. There's a problem. We know that it's going to happen to us. Most likely, statist statistics show that it's going to happen to us. So what is the best way? What's the best alternative? Well, we call it the leveraged care solution. And honestly, a couple of years ago, uh, as, as few as six years ago, there was really only one major option in the leveraged care solution world. Today we have three options, and I want to talk to you about all three of those options and explain them to you. Uh, but they are all predicated upon the passage of the Pension Protection Act in 2006, effective 2010, and a little-known section of that act 
titled Section 844. And in that section, what it did, it, it allows us to reposition pennies today to create guaranteed dollars in the future, that those dollars would come out to us as the insureds tax-free. And that's the key to all of this. So once this was, door was opened, the insurance companies with their brains came together and they figured, well, we, we've got a better solution than standalone long-term care and definitely a better position than um, self-funding. And, and in fact, this is, in essence, self-funding. Uh, it's taking money from your left pocket and actually keeping it on your person but from your left pocket to your right pocket. It's still going to be an asset on your balance sheet. So it is exactly like, like self-funding, except a dollar is not going to be just worth a dollar like in self-funding because you're going to leverage it. In fact, you can leverage that dollar to grow as much as $10, uh, depending on how old you are and what kind of uh, provisions you put on your plan. But it's key to understand that you're going to have this leverage and the money is still yours. It's still an asset on your balance sheet. And you're going to take this dollar and you're going to create more for your care. Furthermore, um, and what I really like about this concept of the leverage care solution, if you dodge that long-term care, if you're not one of the 80% in the women and 60% in the men or the 72% overall that are impacted by a long-term care event in your life, the balance of that long-term care uh, cash is passed to you either in a cash account or in a life insurance benefit, and it's going to be passed to your beneficiaries. So if you dodge it and everything is fine and you never, ever trigger the long-term care benefit, then whatever the balance is or a life insurance benefit is passed to your beneficiaries. So let's talk about the trigger mechanisms for long-term care. What are the long-term care, the long-term care, the leverage care solution? Let's talk about the trigger mechanisms. So what what would cause this event to to be triggered? Well, first of all, it's cognitive impairment. So you can't remember your kids' names, your grandkids' names. You have Alzheimer's. That is a trigger mechanism, and in and of itself. And so that if you if that occurs, then your your benefit, your your cash would expand to the three times or to the ten times, depending on the plan that you have value. Uh, the other trick and me trigger mechanism is not being able to perform two of the six activities of daily living, such as eating, such as bathing, such as dressing toileting, transferring, or maintaining continence. So these are things that you cannot do by yourself anymore. You need to have somebody to help you do those things. That triggers the long-term care event. And so, therefore, then it would qualify you for the, the long-term care benefit. I think one of the things that, when, and it was it's interesting, I was planning an estate the other day, and I was looking at all of their assets and um, I suggested to them, they had plenty of money, you know, over $5 million in total assets. And, and I suggested to them in the planning the estate that they do the um, a leverage care solution. And, and they indicated, well, we've got enough money to take care of our care. And, and, I, I, and I think the important thing to understand is that the leverage care solutions are not created to make us rich. This is not to double or triple our money in the investment itself. It's to prevent us from becoming poor because now we have the means to take care of our care and to to make sure that we don't whittle away at our estate and uh, that we allow more to be left to our children. So let's talk about now the three options, and some of them are relatively new to the, to the scene, uh, but we've been involved in them and we understand this market uh, extensively. So the first option is the long-term care annuity combo. Now, I'm going to go through each of these here in the next uh, few minutes, but I just want to lay out all three of them for you right now. The next one is what's called the, leg the Life Legacy LTC combo. And the third one has a very similar title, 
but you can see that the LTC is first. So the long-term care life combo is the third option. This is the newcomer into the pact here. And so you can, uh, let, let's just take a look at each one of these and how they can be used. And, and and as I'm explaining these to you, and it's also explained in the new special report, Leverage Care Solutions, Answers to Today's Long-Term Care Crisis, uh, I explain each of these uh, options uh, in, great, in, in great detail. But I want to spend some time talking about them today. The first one is this long-term care annuity. So it's just like a regular annuity, a single, a single premium deferred annuity. It has growth in the annuity, and the growth, part of the growth is used to pay for a long-term care benefit that immediately explodes in value up to three times if the long-term care event is triggered. So, for example, a male 65 depositing $100,000 would have an immediate benefit of $330,000. That's a pool now, and that pool is going to be paid out over 72 months or six years. So $4,590 per month would come out of that pool of money. Uh, to take care of for your long-term care. So you can see your 100000 that you had in the backyard now becomes $330,000, or you have it in your CD or your money market account. The tax-deferred annuity is going to continue to earn interest, and so it's uh, it's going to accumulate through the years. It is considered a safe money investment. There's no risk. And it's not a user lose it proposition because if you don't use the long term care benefit, the annuity value passes to your beneficiaries. No exam is required. There's a simple about a 30 minute interview, and a joint option is available so you can have a benefit for you and for your spouse if you would like. It is a reimbursement payout, and this is a little bit different than some of the others. You do have to have expenses or receipts you do have to have um, have had an event take place and have the an expense to be reimbursed with this probably the number one reason why we are seeing people secure the long-term care annuity is because they have an existing annuity that has gain and as you all know uh, hopefully uh, with an annuity, if you have gain in, in an annuity and you want to use it for long-term care or for anything, you're going to pay taxes on the interest first and the principal second. That's, uh, that's the standard across the board. If, however, you were to change that annuity into a long-term care annuity, you would be able to take advantage of Section, IRC, IRC, IR, uh, section 1035 of the Internal Revenue Code. And in this section, you're able to do a tax-free exchange. And so the $100,000 that you have in an annuity, let's say it started off at $50,000 and now it's worth $100,000, that uh, and you trigger the long-term care benefit, the entire $300,000 or three times benefit uh, would create a long-term care pool for you, uh, $41.76 a month for 72 months. All of that would be 100% tax free and that's the key to it so you're taking a taxable event like an annuity and you're now creating a tax free uh, pool of money three hundred thousand dollars forty one hundred dollars a month uh, and so the, we see a lot of folks that are ha that have old annuities especially annuities that are under that are underperforming or variable annuities that are at risk and they want to get them off the risk level and and by the way you don't have to convert the entire amount you can just do some of it uh, so there's a lot of flexibility with regard to that so that pretty well takes care of the long-term care annuity option uh, again if you have any questions on that please write those down and we'll address them at the end of the at, at the end of the webinar today the next solution is the life legacy long-term care combo. And this is a little bit different because remember with the annuity, if you pass away, the annuity value passes to your beneficiaries. Uh, with the life legacy LTC combo, 
it, it can be either a single sum transfer or an annual deposit. The annuity was a single sum transfer. Uh, but it creates a tax-free life insurance benefit. And the long-term care benefit is going to be extracted from the life insurance benefit. So in essence, you become the beneficiary of your own life insurance policy should you trigger two of the six or cognitive impairments, same trigger mechanisms at all of them. And this benefit is paid out to you income tax-free. So if I have a $500,000 life insurance benefit and I'm going to take the benefit of 2% a month uh, for 50 months, I would then, my long-term care benefit would be $10,000 a month tax-free. Again, it's coming from the life insurance benefit, so if I used it for 10 months and passed away, I would have extracted $100,000. My beneficiary would receive the balance of the $400,000. Because there is a life insurance benefit that is driving all of this, and it's, an, and it's a significant life insurance benefit, and, and as I said, you can either do a single sum or annual deposits if you would like, a medical exam is going to be required for this. It's not just a, um, um, a, a simple 30-minute interview like the annuity is and like the third option is going to be. Um, a nice thing about this, too, is if you have existing cash value in a policy, you could actually do a 1035 exchange into that. And you can also use this plan to take advantage of the family bank strategy. And many of you have my book by that same title, The Family Bank Strategy. If you don't have it, make sure you get a copy of it. Call in and get a copy of The Family Bank Strategy. You'll be able to see how this uh, intertwines and works with everything, with all of this. But you can use this to also accumulate uh, cash. So in essence, what you can do is you can not only take advantage of the family bank strategy and accumulate tax-free cash, in a cash account, you have the life insurance component and the long-term care. So your life insurance benefit or your life insurance policy becomes a very, very multifaceted plan. It is a cash indemnity payout for the long-term care, meaning that no receipts are required. All you need to do is get a doctor or a, a, a licensed practitioner to determine that you can't do two of the six or you're cognitively impaired and they cut you a check for the 10000 a month or whatever your benefit is based on how much you started started with as far as the life insurance is concerned. And that and there's no receipts required, so uh, you can use it to um, help family members get to and from to help take, take care of you or be with you or, or whatever. It's, a, it's, a, it's an excellent concept, the cash indemnity. Okay, so I'm going to close the door on that. Again, that is option number two the life legacy combo. And uh, I'm going to give you, and before I close the door, I'm going to give you an example. So we have a 65-year-old female depositing 100000 um, on a single deposit. That would create a $321,000 immediate life insurance benefit. So the, if they were to pass away, if this lady was to pass away the next day, her family would get, wouldn't get 100000 they would get 321000 And of course, if the long-term care event was triggered, she would have a pool of 321000 or 6434 for 50 months tax-free. You can also take this benefit, if you would like, over a, um, a shorter period of time instead of 50 months. You can do it over 25 months, if you would like, and that increases the, 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 the payout. Um, you can also do it uh, for a longer period of time, if you would like. Uh, instead of 2%, you can take 4% out. So... Uh, there's some options there, but most everybody that we talk with, they'll do the 2% benefit. Um, and that's 2% a month for 50 months. But look at this, though. I'm putting in $100,000. I have my $300,000 of long-term care benefit. I have the uh, of life insurance, and I have my pool of money of $321,000 or $6,400. But I'm also accumulating cash so that in 10 years, my $100,000 is grown to 122000 based on current assumptions. And in 20 years, it grows to 175000 So this is part of the dynamics of the family bank that I was explaining earlier. Again, a medical exam is required for this plan. 
Uh, but it is is an option that really is viable, especially if you would like to leave an increased legacy to your kids. You have special needs situations. You have grandkids that you would like. Uh, my wife, Jane, her policy, I'm her beneficiary for her policy. But uh, should I pass away before she does, the benefit's going straight to the grandkids. It's not going to go to our kids because our kids get other money from other assets. So uh, the life legacy is a is an excellent concept it's a multi-dimensional plan and something that you're going to you may want to consider for yourself solution number three is kind of the new kid on the block uh, it's a the, the we call it the ltc life combo you'll notice that it's different than the life legacy because it emphasizes long-term care it is currently requires a single sum uh, but that'll soon change after the first of the year where it can be a depository plan like the uh, the life plan is, the, the life legacy. And a single sum, you deposit into this and it becomes immediately, um, it can grow as high as 10 times the deposit. I'll explain that here in a second. It's a payout, of average payout is 72 months, but you can, you can make it longer if you'd like or shorter if you would like. Uh, it doesn't have as high of a life insurance component to it. It is a life insurance policy. Therefore, the benefit is paid out tax-free, just like um, the other two plans for the long-term care. Uh, but it is focused mostly on the long-term care, not the legacy. It does have what's called a return of premium or a return of deposit account. And so if you... Put in a hundred thousand dollars, and in, in five years you say, you know, hey, this isn't really what I want to do. I don't, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I joined Friendship Village, and I don't, I don't need this anymore. Uh, and you want your money back, you can get a full return of your money. There's no interest though earned in this account like there is in the life legacy plan. Um, and it, the key to this one, I think the reason why a lot of people are gravitating toward this one is it has an inflation benefit option and no medical exam is required. And just as in the life legacy, it is a cash indemnity payout. So let me give you an example. Again, with our male 65, and we're going to use a 3% simple inflation, he deposits $100,000. Again, right now, we you can only do single deposits, but soon you'll be able to do depository plans in this. But immediately, it increases the long-term care pool to 300, almost $400,000. So again, remember, I've got the money sitting in the CD or a money market account or in the backyard in the coffee can. It's 100,000 sitting there. If I trigger the long-term care event, it's worth 100,000. That's it. That's self-funding. That's what's self-funding. If I take that 100,000 and put it into the LTC life combo plan from my left pocket to my right pocket, it's now immediately worth 300 and $400,000 pool of money, which then would create, if I took it out over 72 months, a benefit of $5,119. And remember, that's all going to be tax-free. But you know, I'm 65. I'm not going to trigger the benefit at 65. But I might when I'm 85, 20 years from now. With that 3% inflation provision in it, look how much my long-term care pool has grown. It's actually grown almost 200000 over $200,000 with now my long-term care benefit at $8,000 a month for 72 months. Again, that's tax-free. So um, let's now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just take a second and kind of look at all three options side by side. I've laid them out here side by side, and we can do this for each of you, or if you decide you want I want one and three or two, one and two, and, and we can do any any combination of these and let you see specifically for you what it would look like for you. But let's just look at $100,000 deposited in each account. A single sum deposit transferred again from your left pocket to your right pocket. I am not spending any money. I'm repositioning my money. It's still an asset on my balance sheet. Uh, what I want to first do is look at the legacy benefit. So in each case, Annuity is worth what the annuity is worth. That's it. With the life legacy, it's worth 300000 And with the LTC life, you can see it's not worth as much. It's it's 159 so it's not the big play is not the legacy here. The legacy is the most important play in this life legacy. 
Uh, when we're talking about care, though, let's just go over a look at the total pool. The total pool is about the same in each of them uh, initially, but the annuity is going to grow in value. The life legacy is not going to grow in value. But because we have the inflation provision of 3% simple for the 65-year-old male, it's going to grow to 606000 in 20 years, the $100,000. So you can see how that, that works there. And then we, what we do is we extract the money from the pool and we pay it out over 72 months, 50 months for the life legacy, 72 months here and the others. So you can see the payout is a little bit longer, stretches it out. With the LTC life, you can actually take the payout over a shorter period of time. So your pool is the same, uh, but the payout is would be higher because it would be comparable to the 50-month payout here. Um, and the life insurance benefit would be affected if you take a shorter period of time. Um, let's look now at the liquidity. So one of the – I've heard a lot of times people say, well, I just don't want my money – to be gone. I don't want it to be gone forever. I, I want it to be there. Remember, I've promised you this is an asset on your balance sheet. So let's look at the liquidity. In six years, it's 100000 in each case. In each case, it's 100000 So I might get my money back in six years. Now, obviously, with the life legacy, because I'm earning a higher rate of return on this, uh, I'm going to end up with more cash value, and in fact, 166 in 20 years. But in the annuity, my money is still growing, even though some of my money that I'm earning is going toward the continuation of benefit provision here for the long-term care. You can see that it still grows in value. With the LTC life, this is a refund plan, and there's no earnings in the cash value in here. You just get your money back at the end, at the end of the day. But the liquidity is still there. It's still just a reposition asset from your left pocket to your right pocket. Um, and as you can see, the care payout methodology here is a reimbursement on the annuity and indemnity on the last two. So what does all this mean? What do I take away from this? Well, if, if you're thinking about this from your own position, look at your assets. What do I have in my asset pool? And you're, I'm pretty confident that most of you have some kind of cash equivalent sitting there. This would be the money that you would want to transfer into the leverage care solution. You're going to transfer it, reposition it. It's still, again, going to be an asset on your balance sheet. It's still going to be there, still part of your estate, and you're just going to simply carve off a little bit of it and use this to take care of your long-term care event, your potential long-term care event. That's going to happen to 80% of us uh, for women and 70, 60% for men, 72% overall. So it's most likely going to happen to us. Now, I, I frequently have people ask me, okay, David, well, which plan is the best? I had a couple call me the other day. They were, they were ready to do this. They said, tell me, which plan is the best for me? Well, first of all, how's your health? I need to know that. Uh, you, you obviously have to be healthy, somewhat healthy to get this, not as healthy as you would on a standalone long-term care, but you do have to have pretty good health. Uh, do you mainly want to generate a long-term care benefit? Is that the focus of what we want here? Uh, I've, uh, I've had co people call in and say, I don't have any kids. I don't have anybody I want to leave anything to. Uh, so legacy is not an issue to them. They want to focus mostly on the long-term care benefit. Do you want a long-term care for both you and your spouse? Uh, another question would be, where are the funds coming from? How are you repositioning the money? Uh, is it coming from qualified accounts? Uh, you know, where is this money coming from and how much do you have to transfer now? So uh, I have a lot of people, I want to do this, but I don't have 100000 I don't have 200000 but I do. I, but I could set aside $20,000 a year. Well, then you're going to want to do a depository plan. Um, is the money qualified? As I, I mentioned that just, recent, just a second ago, qualified money. Another question that I have is, oh, by the way, qualified money is anything that's in your IRAs, 401ks. I, I, I sometimes talk like everybody understands the word qualified, and I find out that they don't. Uh, the next one is another question that you should ask is, uh, um, do you want to leave a legacy, a cash legacy to your family? Well, if you do, then you're probably going to want to do option two, um, and that's going to create the largest cash legacy for your family. Do you want to accumulate cash value? Again, option two would be your best option for there. Or is a return of premium most important to you than either the annuity or the uh, 
the LTC life plan would be best for you. Do you have an existing annuity that has gains? Well, we know that the annuity is the only one that addresses that, but you might have a life insurance policy that has gains, and you can use that uh, for the life plan. Do you want a carrier that has a real super high Comdex financial rating or a, a, a financial rate strength rating like AM Best, but we call it the Comdex rating. It's a composition of all the rates and rating systems. Or how long do you want your care to pay out? Those are an, that's another factor. So these are all key factors that help you in determining which option is best for you. Uh, these are key factors. And the, the one that drives it the most is how much you have to deposit or transfer or reposition, uh, what your health is, and how long you want the benefit, and then, of course, the source of funds. As I said, you have to be in moderately good health. We had a gentleman call us the other day. He was adamant he needed to have this. This was the most important thing that he could ever think of. He read my book, or report, Leverage Care Solution, and he has uh, currently has Parkinson's. Well, he can't qualify. So you have to be in relatively good health. And if you're in good health today, that doesn't guarantee that you're going to be in good health tomorrow. So I recommend that if you're motivated to do this, get it done now. Do the transferring now. Get the repositioning now. Get qualified now and determine, determine if you can uh, qualify for it. Um, I guess the next question that I have uh, for for all of you is kind of a uh, rhetorical question. I don't need an answer from everybody, but why would you want to work with us? Well, we have been and continue to be the the only source for um, financial gurus throughout the country. And in fact, um, the Dr. Skousen, Mark Skousen, Forecast and Strategies just recommended us in his July newsletter, as did Bob Carlson in his July newsletter. Uh, Dr. Eifrig in uh, The Retirement Millionaire, uh, in Weiss Education Service, and then Money, Money and Markets uh, with John Malden. And we've been recommended by these these gentlemen for uh, literally 20 years, 30 years. Well, Skousen's actually 40 years. And as a result, we have to know what's going on. We have to know which the best plans are uh, out there and certainly need to know um, which the p best plan for you would be. And we can help you and help, help make that determination for you. We can, you can, any plan that's out there, if you want it, we can get it, certainly can. Uh, but we're going to know the difference between plans. There's a current plan out there right now that last year $1.4 billion was deposited into the plan. And I found out that uh, that much had been deposited into it. I about blew a gasket because and it's, it's in the nature of the long-term care life option, so the third option. And a lot of people have been acquiring it through the wirehouses. And I, and I inquired, well, why would so much be deposited in that when the new plan that's out from one of our carriers is 25% better out of the chute and it's an indemnity benefit instead of a reimbursement benefit? So we know this. Uh, Stockbrokers may, you know, in their defense probably don't know that this option is even out there. But you certainly aren't going to know this. And so it's, it requires us with our knowledge and expertise to help you get through this. So what I recommend that you do is uh, you complete the leverage care solution um, form in the back of the, the special report. Or actually, uh, we have this. We can email this to you. You can fill it out if you would like. It's in, it's in the back of the report. Um, but make sure you complete that and get it to us, and then we'll give you a complimentary analysis of which plan is best for you. And you can you can ask. I want to see all three plans. I'd like to see just one. Which this is the one I want to do. Uh, we can we can do that for you and, and lay out which of the three which plan is the best for you based on your goals and objectives. Um, I want you to know too that this is kind of an important issue to not only to us. But it's also important to these financial gurus that I talked about. When I was at Freedom Fest, Mark Skousen had received a copy of this Leverage Care Solution report through an email that I had sent him. And he was blown away, and he recommended it in his June, July newsletter, like I told you. But when he actually held a copy of the report, 
he understood it. When you see it online, it's a little bit more difficult to understand it. And so he said, would you do me a favor? Everybody, all of my hundreds of subscribers that have requested the Leverage Care Solution Report, would you make sure that it gets out to them um, and just send it to them? And I said, well, Mark, this costs us a lot of money. And he goes, Dave, this is such a critical issue. I want, I want anybody that's requested it to receive it. So this is the proposition that I'm making to you today. Not only will we prepare a leverage care solution analysis for you at no cost, complimentary, but if you call in today, call in the 800 number at 888-892-1102 uh, or go to uh, – well, just just do that. That's the easiest way. Just call in and talk for Tawny or for Sarah and ask them to send you a complimentary copy of the report, and we'll just send it to you today. Um, and that's uh, that's my – that was Skousen's recommendation, and uh, I'm willing to do that, and I'd, I'd like to make that happen so that you can have a hard copy of this report. So for that, I, I am completed. I have finished the webinar today. I, I was about 45 minutes, which is what I promised to do. Uh, now we can open it up for 